Hey guys, it's CJ over at AirDog. Today we got a 1997 12 valve in for a DF165 5G install. Uh, for you 220 guys, you can also reference this as the installation is gonna be exactly the same. Uh, so starting out here, we're gonna get this box opened up for you. When you first open the kit, you're gonna notice the supplied install manual as well as the green warranty card. Make sure you guys get that filled out and sent back to us within 30 days. You're gonna get the supplied wiring harness. Half inch air dog hose. The draw straw. You're going to have the pump itself. Mounting brackets, and then the sub assembly kit that will have all fittings and hardware needed for installation. Also, during this installation, we're going to show you how to remove your factory fuel pump and fuel filter using a big block Chevy block off plate. Um, or any machine block off play from your preferred supplier. Now that we went through the main kit unboxing, we're gonna open up the sub assembly kit here. This is gonna have all other needed components for your air dog installation. We're gonna have a small piece of hose. This is gonna be used for your injection pump and injector return after air dog installation. A customer service O-ring kit. The bolts and hardware needed to mount the pump. Your filler neck return tee with hose clamps. Base fittings and hose fittings need to assemble and install the air dog. Zip ties to clean up any wiring or hoses. Your spacer block, as well as your cradle bracket. So we're gonna start by mounting the air dog pump into the cradle bracket. Um, one thing to note, um, on this particular application, we know we're gonna go on the inside of the frame rail. So you're always gonna wanna make sure that the gear rotor side of the pump is facing towards the tank as this is going to be your suction um, so we're going to need to mount it in the cradle bracket accordingly um, so just just kind of note that your rotor cover is always going to go towards the tank as, as the suction side of the pump so we're going to start by using the supplied hardware you will need a 7 16 socket uh, and potentially a small extension and also these socket heads are gonna be a 3 16 Allen wrench if you do wanna use one of those. So now that we've got the pump installed in the cradle bracket, I personally prefer to install the base fittings before you get underneath the truck, um, just to have a little bit more room. So we're gonna remove these uh, threaded in plugs. These are installed as these are 100% tested before they leave our facility. Uh, so there could be a little bit of test fluid left in them. So we'll get those removed. And then we'll get our air dog fitting. You're gonna have a three quarter UNF. You're gonna have a seven sixteenths UNF and another three quarter UNF. This is where it's gonna get a little slightly different for you 220 guys, as you're gonna have a dash eight O-ring boss. So three quarter 16 O-ring to a dash 10 adapter fitting. And we're gonna use a dash 10 swivel to push lock because you're gonna have five eighths hose. But again, this is gonna be a 165 5G. So you're gonna use a supplied three quarter UNF fitting. So we're gonna get the three quarter UNF installed into the suction side of this pump. We're gonna take our seven eighths wrench and get these snugged up. These are an O-ring seal guys. Uh, they're not like a pipe thread or anything. Um, so just make sure you're getting a good crush on the O-ring, but there's no reason to you know, tighten these extremely tight. Uh, and we're gonna get to the outlet side here. You got another three quarter UNF. This is what's gonna be going to your engine um, out of the air dog itself. And then you're gonna do your return fitting. Again, this is a 7 16 UNF. We slightly increased this on this 5G um, as this is kind of our high performance line. So it's easily adaptable uh, to A in lines at the dash for if you guys uh, would like to adapt it for like your race truck applications. So we'll get this thread in. Again, guys, O-ring seal, so you don't really have to crank them super tight. Take your 9 16 wrench. Snug it up. So now that we have these fittings installed in the pump, we're gonna get underneath the truck. We're gonna figure out the height in which we would like to mount it on our adjustable sandwich plates. Um, get the sandwich plates mounted to the cradle bracket, and then we can bolt the pump on the truck. 
So one quick thing too, guys, uh, as you're putting your fittings in your base, you might've noticed there's an extra three quarter UNF. What that's gonna be used for is on your draw straw. So on the 165, again, we're gonna use half inch hose. So you have a three quarter UNF fitting. We're gonna thread it into here. Um, for you 220 guys, it's gonna be the same fittings uh, that would have been on the suction side of the air dog. That adapter fitting with the JIC style swivel to 5 8 hose. Um, so that's why this is a pre-installed. Um, so we can use this on both applications for the 220 and the 165. So you guys are getting a good upgraded 5 8 draw straw. So now that we're underneath the vehicle, we're gonna determine which mounting hole height we would like for this installation. So what I like to do is get a couple bolts uh, for your top two bolt holes here. We're gonna figure out where we want the plate. Slide them in so it can hook onto the frame rail and hold itself up. Now that we got this bracket hung on this frame rail, we're gonna hold our air dog up and determine which height we would like to mount it uh, to make sure that we have good clearance on the cab uh, not hit anything, but we want to tuck it up nice and tight for the customer uh, so it's not hanging low below the vehicle. Um, it's looking like we're going to go with this third and second from the bottom. Uh, so we're going to get this pulled back off, get it mounted to the cradle bracket, and then actually mount the pump on the truck. So now we've been underneath the truck and determined we're going to use the second and third from the bottom uh, mounting holes on this particular application. We're going to go ahead and drop our flathead bolts in. These are countersunk. So when they're against the frame rail, you don't have any issues. We're gonna turn it upside down. Take our spacer block. The spacer block is to get you away from any parking cables uh, or brake lines or fuel lines that may be on the frame rail. So we're back underneath the truck here. We've determined the height in which we would like to mount the air dog. We went ahead and tightened the sandwich plate bolts up. Um, it's kind of tough to film. So just note that this is already tight. Um, the friction basically from the frame rail and the cradle bracket are going to hold these from not spinning um, whenever you go to tighten these up. So we're going to get the pump put back on here. We're going to get the hardware, get this tightened back up, and then we'll be moving on uh, to removing the bed for this draw straw application. So, you know, with the beauty of editing, bed's off. Um, we got the pump mounted. We're gonna start by showing you the installation of the draw straw. We're gonna wanna access the fuel module so we can determine and make sure that we're not putting it where the fuel sending arm may be. Um, so we're gonna disconnect these connections, get the module pulled out, um, and get back with you when we're ready to drill the hole for the draw straw. So we've got the fuel module removed. Um, one thing to note is there's not a locating tab, so just make sure you have this aligned properly when reinstalling. Um, but we wanted to verify that we were gonna have any clearance issues with the draw straw once installed, so we've located where we believe we're gonna wanna drill that. Um, so we're gonna get the hole drilled, um, get that draw straw tightened up, and uh, show you guys how to cut it to length. So now that we got our one inch hole drilled in the tank, um, one thing to note, it is kind of nice to have a cup or something that you can put underneath to catch any shavings that might go into the tank because as you can see, there will be some. Um, so now we're gonna get our draw straw here. We're gonna put it down in the tank and you're gonna wanna take a Sharpie or a pen and mark where the top of the tank is in reference on the draw straw. So what you're going to do with that measurement is you're going to want to measure from your line you just marked to the top of the actual bulkhead itself. We're going to want to cut that much off the bottom of the straw. And then we're going to show you how you can drill some holes before cutting to make sure that it, you can't have any 
issues of the tank sucking to the bottom of the draw straw itself. So now that we've measured the distance between our mark and our sealing surface, um, we're going to take that on this application at, at seven and a quarter. Um, and then we're going to take a drill bit and we're going to drill straight through, rotate 90 degrees and drill through again. Basically that'll make kind of a crown. Um, so even if this is pressed directly on the bottom of the tank, it can still pull fuel from those half holes once we cut it. Um, so you never have to worry about it sucking to the bottom of the tank and limiting the fuel flow to your air dog. So on this particular one, once I open up the holes, it was easy enough just to break it off. We're going to take a file and clean up any of these edges that may be sharp. Um, and then when we tighten it to the bottom of the tank, it, once it's flat, you'll have all this surface in which it can still pull fuel, making sure you have no inlet restriction on your air dog. So now that we've got this cut to length, we're going to thread the nut onto the bulkhead and get this tightened up. Kind of get everything ready. You're going to want to fish your draw straw through both washers and your nut. Once you get that hand tight, you're going to want to take a wrench and tighten that the rest of the way up. Make sure to figure out the orientation in which you would like your suction line before final tightening. So now that we got this draw straw tightened up and installed, you're going to want to put your tank module sealing ring back in. Make sure that's nice and seated. Then we're going to reinstall your fuel module. And like I said, guys, there's not really an alignment locator like on some modules, um, but you do have the lines and plug, electrical plug to reference. Get our locking ring back on. And tightens back up. So now we want to reinstall our factory lines. We're no longer going to use this factory 3 8 line. Uh, so I took a screwdriver and released these lock tabs to remo remove this uh, blue locking tab. And we're going to install this vacuum cap. Um, but you're going to want to reinstall your fuel sending unit, reinstall your injector and injection pump return. This is not going to be modified at the tank side. We will do a small modification in the engine bay, but you need to keep your factory return. So now that we have the draw straw installed, we're gonna jump over to the filler neck return tee um, so we can make both these lines at the same time and drop them down to the air dog. Um, so you got your filler neck return. You're gonna to wanna to locate where you would like to cut your filler neck. We know we're gonna to wanna to orient it down so we can run these two lines clean side by side down to the air dog. Um, so I kinda of already marked that. We're gonna take our cutters. And slowly trim around this um, until it's completely cut in half and we can install this return tee. So one thing to note is there is arrows. Um, you wanna make sure that that is oriented towards the tank. There's a little tab inside this filler neck tee to direct the flow back to the tank. So that is very crucial, arrow towards the tank. So I went ahead and doubled the hose up since we were on top of the truck here and it was a little bit easier and pressed a uh, half inch straight in one side and another half inch in the other. Um, one will be for your filler neck tee and one's gonna be for your suction line. So we can go ahead and kind of sneak these around and route these real clean. So to your air dog suction and to your air dog return. So they're nice and clean routing. They'll run down to the pump together. And then once we cut that, the drop will be left to make your outlet line to your injection pump. So now that we're back underneath the truck, these are the two lines that I made. It's the same hose, just doubled up. We're going to cut the suction line to length. So we're gonna kind of get an idea where we need to be here. Gonna get our cutters. Tuck this hose back up to make sure our routing is how we like it. I'm gonna trim this back about another inch and then we're gonna press in a half inch straight fitting and your suction line is done. So we went ahead and zip tied our lines up nice and clean and we're gonna move on to our return line. Um, so we're gonna determine which length we would like this to be routed. We're gonna go ahead and cut it. And then this drop that we have here will be what would be the outlet line to your engine. So you're gonna to wanna to save this. So 
So on this particular vehicle, they did have an aftermarket fuel filter um, attached to the intake horn here. So we're gonna get all this pulled off uh, and then we're gonna begin the outlet line to the injection pump, but we're gonna need this out of the way for that. So now we're gonna begin the installation of our WAP-103. To do that, you're gonna to wanna to remove the banjo fitting in the side of the injection pump. This is where we're gonna do the feed from the air dog into the pump. To do so, we're gonna to have to remove this complete hard line um, back at the fuel filter head. And then we're also gonna to have to remove this little bitty banjo bolt here. Um, that's your injector return. We're gonna show you how we're gonna retain that here in a little bit. But we're gonna start by taking those banjo bolts out and then we're gonna remove the fuel filter head completely. So the removal of this fuel filter head for us was probably a little bit more difficult than it will be for you guys because it has this uh, machined on like dummy filter for that aftermarket filter. So it's a little bit tougher to fish out. Um, so just for reference, um, you had your inlet side of the fuel filter housing right here. It had a small banjo bolt that actually went in top of the other banjo bolt. That's your injector return. We're gonna keep that banjo bolt um, as well as ceiling washers. Um, we'll show you why here in a little bit. Um, we also had another banjo bolt for your outlet. This is the one that went, uh, it was a line that would go down to your injection pump. So you're gonna remove your injection pump banjo bolt as well as this one. Um, and all this just pulls out and is no longer needed. So now that we got our factory fuel filter housing removed, we're gonna move on to removing the factory fuel pump. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to show you guys. There's gonna be one big electrical plug, two 10 millimeter bolts um, and a three quarter inch flare like line nut uh, to remove the suction line to the pump. We're gonna pull it out of here and then I'll show you guys a little bit more on the bench as to what I removed. Uh, so you have a little bit better idea as to what you'll be doing. So now that we got this factory fuel pump fished out of here. This was the inlet to your factory fuel filter housing. So you already have this banjo unhooked when you get to this point. There's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts that'll go through here. Um, if you were to just remove the plunger and leave the pump housing, you would remove this and then bolt this back on, but we're gonna do a block off plate. Um, there'll be a line that you'll disconnect off of here and then one electrical plug. So once you get all that unhooked, you'll have to fish it out. It's kind of tight, but you'll get it. Um, and then now um, all you're gonna have is the fuel block off plate that is this big and just replace this with that new gasket and uh, block off plate. And you remove all this off the side of your block, a lot cleaner and easier to work on later. So now that we've removed our factory fuel filter housing and factory fuel pump, uh, and got rid of all the unnecessary lines. We're gonna go ahead and install our injection pump fitting into the side of the P-pump itself. Um, so this is gonna be where your outlet air dog goes directly into your injection pump. There's no factory filtration on here at all anymore. Uh, just straight in the side of the injection pump. So now that we got this injection pump fitting, while we're up here and reconnecting uh, some of the factory lines and stuff, um, we need to modify your injection pump and injector return line. So we're gonna go over to the bench. I'm gonna assemble our return uh, T that allows the factory banjo bolt to still work um, and then we'll move into here and show you where you need to use that flex 516 soft line um, and then that little T um, to tie everything back together. So now that we're over the workbench here we're going to use our adapter nut uh, and two hose barbs. So first thing is I'm going to use a little bit of thread sealing on these. This is Loctite brand, but this is not like red Loctite. It's just your standard thread sealer that you're gonna to wanna to use. So this is an MPT thread, so there's no need to try to bury all the threads as it is a compression and taper style thread. So we're gonna do our other side here. And now that we have this assembly put together, we're gonna to go back under the hood and show you where to install it. So now we're gonna tie the injection pump return and the injector return back together and then back to the factory line. Um, so you're gonna remove the hose clamp directly underneath the intake shelf on the head in between the P-pump and the block itself. Um, and then a little bit further down, you're gonna have another hose clamp as it goes back to a hard line. We're gonna remove that hose clamp and pull that factory line out. Um, then we're gonna replace it with a section of hose 
that uh, block adapter that you just seen me assemble and then back to the factory line. Um, we'll, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on and then we'll show you once it's in there. It's a little hard to film um, what you're looking for. So now that we got that old hose removed, we went ahead and approximated the lengths that we were gonna need um, for this return connection. Um, so you're gonna basically cut the provided section in half, or not in half, but to length. Uh, you need to line it up with this banjo bolt uh, that's still underneath the hood and then back down to the factory line. I'm gonna get this pressed on, then we're gonna get the camera up in here in a second. So you guys can see this as it is installed to understand what the goal is. So now that we have the injection pump and injector return tied back together, uh, we have the WAP installed directly inside the injection pump. We're gonna assemble the feed line, so the outlet line of the air dog to the feed side of the P-pump. Um, so directly on the side of the P-pump, you're gonna wanna do a half inch 90. So we're gonna get this half inch 90 pressed in. We're gonna drop the remainder of the hose down and cut it to length and press in the remaining half inch straight to connect it to the air dog. So now that we've routed this line down from the engine bay um, to get an approximate length here, got the line how we want it. Um, we'll go ahead and cut it. May need to trim a little bit more. It's always safe to leave it long. So we'll trim this up. We're gonna get a fitting pressed in here and connected. Now that we've got everything plumbed up, we're gonna begin the air dog harness installation. Um, looking like this little ground right here is gonna be a good place to mount the relay. So we're gonna be power ground, mount the relay, and then this key on fuse through the firewall to tap into a key on fuse. So we'll move into the cab here in a second once I get these hooked up, uh, and we'll show you which fuse we're gonna tap. Alrighty, so now that we've got the uh, fuse tap pushed through the firewall, um, we're gonna go to fuse one here, that's power outlet. That is gonna be a key on power. So anytime that the key is turned to ignition, um, the pump will be energized. So we'll go ahead and get this cover reinstalled. We're gonna get the pump primed up and start the truck. So now that we have all the air dog plumbing connected and the harness connected as well, we're gonna go ahead and prime the system. So we're gonna turn the key on, let the pump run for roughly 30 seconds. You'll hear the tone change in the system once it's primed, then you'll be able to start the vehicle. So we're going to roll it forward, uh, wait a second, and then we'll fire it up. So now that we got the air dog system all primed up, vehicle started, we're going to back it back underneath the two post lift here, get the bed bolted back on, uh, and send this truck down the road. installation on this 9712 valve. Um, we understand some of that return stuff was a little hard to see. We got as best pictures as we can. Uh, so if you do have any questions on your installation, feel free to shoot us a phone call. Uh, we can always get you helped out and make sure your installation goes smoothly. 